Hello again. In this video, we will explore design strategies for reusable products. As we have discussed, the principle behind reuse is to keep products functional and attractive to as many users as possible and for as long as possible. In other words, extend and intensify the use of a product by preventing it from becoming obsolete and then waste. There are many reasons for a product to become obsolete, and not all of them are technical. Think of clothes you own, which are in perfect shape, but no longer in fashion. Think of the last time you changed your phone. Was the old one no longer working? Design for reuse must therefore not only take into account the wear and tear that make products eventually fail, it must also take into account the social and even emotional reasons that lead users to discard their products, and which make some products no longer desirable even to reuse customers. Let's look at some design strategies to extend the service life of products. From a technical perspective, products are more likely to stay in use for longer and even to pass on from one generation to another if they are built to last. There are a few things to be taken into account to help make products last longer. Durability of materials and connections. Choose the right material for the right job. Parts which are subject to a particular stress or wear should be made particularly resistant. Materials which corrode, stain or fail easily should be avoided. How many products have you had to throw away simply because a particularly important part or connection broke and it is impossible or just very expensive to fix or replace it? Ease of maintenance and repair. We will talk more about complex repair in the coming weeks, but most products can use some basic cleaning and maintenance every now and then. Avoiding areas where dirt might collect or ensuring ease of access can make these items appear newer for a longer time. Remember, the emotional feeling of users towards products that look and feel new is as important as their technical condition. At the same time, for some products, a used look is also valuable. Standardization, compatibility and adaptability. Think of what we often refer to as timeless design. Often this means that, even as fashions change, this object is still attractive. An example of this is the IMSS DSR chair. Even though it was designed in 1948, this chair can still be found in designer shops everywhere, and customers still find this design current and fashionable. Simplicity and functionality often help a product remain attractive for a longer time. Compatibility and adaptability also play an important role in the information technologies field. Think of the USB or flash drive, which has been the standard plug and play connector since 2000. Even though companies have tried to introduce their own drives as a way of locking out competi competitors, the USB drive has remained the standard system. As we have seen, it is not only technical durability which makes products long-lasting, social and emotional factors can be equally important when it comes to determine how long a product might last in use and for how long it will remain desirable in the reuse market. This brings us to the last point. Product attachment and trust. Most of us can think of at least one item in our home to which we are emotionally attached. <coughs> In other cases, it might not be such an emotional attachment, but we might instead find the product so reliable that even if it's not the latest, shiniest, or the most functional model, we still prefer to use it instead of replacing it. So, products can be designed and manufactured to last for a very long time by being easy to maintain and clean, and by being resistant to wear and tear or to changes in technology and fashion. As we have seen, products that last longer are also ideal from a circular economy perspective, as they avoid the need to invest more resources into making new products or into repairing, remanufacturing or recycling the old ones. So why is it that so many products around us are still designed with only a single use in mind? Why do important parts or connections often fail after a couple of years? 
Furthermore, how can it be that we often have to replace products such as phones or computers, not because they have broken, but because they simply no longer support new software updates? The reason for this lies in the business model behind these products. Manufacturing activities are driven by business interests and the need to return investors' investment, generate profit, and maintain cash flow. In the following video, we will talk about the business drivers and barriers which lead companies to make certain design decisions. Some of these decisions may, from a circular economy perspective, appear unhelpful.